we can investigate the losses, how efficient this system would be, and how we can improve it so that the complete drive line would be reliable, low cost, and high efficient. Flywheels are basically a mechanical way of storing energy. We could make an analogy to batteries, which store energy chemically, but uh, with a flywheel what we do is that we use the kinetic energy, which is associated to a certain mass, uh, rotating a certain rotational speed, and then you can store energy in this system. Uh, this rotating mass is therefore connected to an electric machine, and we can control this electric machine as a motor or as a generator if we would like you know, to give or to take out energy of this system. You might want to decide the flywheel to be you know, big but rotating in a lower speed, or you might have it a little bit smaller but rotating in a very high rotational speed. So you basically, depending on which application you have for a flywheel, you can design the system and then connect it either mechanically or electrically to the, what we can call the load. I knew that I wanted to come to Sweden to do a, a PhD. And uh, so then I basically googled the different universities that you have here, you know, related to energy systems. And I found Uppsala, and I found the Uppsala website, and then I could, you know, found the information about the different research areas and so on. And, uh, and then I became very interested and applied for a position. The idea is that, you know, in the very close future, is that we could have electric cars in which we could trust as much as we trust in the cars that we have in our garrets nowadays. Flywheels can combine very good energy density and power density. And those are very important requirements when you think about electric cars. We have the mechanical requirements. How big is the system? How big is the battery? How big is the flywheel? Which, which speeds are we talking about? And then we come to the, to the mechanical system. What about the forces that are in the system? You know, what about if you turn your car? What about if there is an accident? And of course, the electrical system then we would have the electrical machines, how to design them so that they can be very efficient and, of course, not very expensive. How do you control the system, the electronics that you need, the power control for the, the complete drive line? So all this are put together, you know, so that you can have a complete system. It's very important when you do research with new technologies. Not only, of course, it's important to do the design and the simulations, but also coming to the point where you can build the prototype and you can test it experimentally and compare your simulation results. Because when you simulate something, you don't know exactly what you're going to find when you build it. You cannot predict everything. So when you come down to the lab, you need to do measurements. That's where the real results are. And I think that's a very, very important step when it comes to this research. And it's a very, very good thing that we have here at Uppsala University.